So hello everybody, this is Monday, so it's time for another Power Query video. Into this video, we're going to do part two of the video that we did on Monday and regarding running totals in Power Query. So I'm going to show you how to do it by group. Now, this video is going to be a bit tough. It might give you a little bit of a headache. Hopefully, I managed to explain it correctly. But if you don't understand it, it is advanced functionality. So don't worry about that, okay? Hopefully I explain it well so you understand it no matter how many, for how long you've been doing Power Query. Let's get started. Okay guys, so here we have the same table that we did in the previous video. We have month product sales and then with an index and list range and list sum, we actually create running totals for the entire table. But how about if you want to do running totals for each month? How do you do that? This is what we're going to do. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is duplicate the previous table because it's going to be the same data, but we're going to remove the two, these two steps. Here's the thing. To do running totals by month, we're going to need the previous steps. I'll show you. That's why I haven't deleted them. So the first thing we're going to do is group by month. We want to have all rows. Thank you very much. There. And now... What we want to do is exactly the same thing as we did here with the index at the list range list. I'm going to previous video if you want to know exactly how this works. But we want to do it for each table. So what I'm going to do is go to the advanced editor and copy those two steps because we are going to do exactly the same thing. So we're going to come in here. And as you can see here, we have the tables within tables. And this is what we're going to do. This is where things get hairy. I'm going to create a function inside here. So it is function to calculate running totals. The function is going to be called run function and is going to be the table that we're going to fit to the function is going to be called run table, which is a table. And the steps are the steps that we just copied. But here, what is being going to be fed is this table, that, that the variable table, right? So instead of this step, what we need to have there is the run table. Spell it correctly, otherwise you will run into trouble. And that's all. If I don't do anything else, you're going to see that nothing happens everything is exactly the same because the function we have created we haven't used it yet so power query is ignoring it completely so how do we activate it this is what we're going to do in this step okay comma so we're going to call the function and we're going to call this step running totals for example that's the name of the step and then it is table trans, trans, uh, I don't have M intelligence on, so I have to be very careful <laughs> so I don't misspell anything. Now, previous step, what is the previous step? This one, right? So transform columns on the previous step. And then we're going to do that for the column count. You know where the tables are in here. And then we're going to do for each one, we're going to run the function. Oish. Too many fingers. <laughs> run function, spell it correctly, please. Close, close. And this should call the function if I did things correctly. Obviously, I have to call this step. Now, <laughs> okay, so now that we call the step, you see that I have the index and the column for each individual one. So you can see here that it's actually working. I have 1, 2, 3, 11, 33, 66, 
Beautiful. So the only thing that you need to do now is to expand. And there you have it. We have our running totals by month. Again, not very easy. If you haven't done any functions, a little bit hard to understand the flow. But if you have uh, some knowledge of Power Query, this is how you do it. So yeah, hopefully this video was useful. Hopefully I will see you again on Wednesday. Enjoy your holidays. Take care and 